So I've come to the very non-scientific conclusion that PC hardware enthusiasts enjoy taking leisurely strolls down memory lane. I started my series then and now back in December, and since then I've received a steady stream of requests to revisit different eras of computer history and test different sets of components. My last video up here on the AMD FX62 has almost 10,000 views, which is pretty good for my channel. My first video on the 8800 GTX has 230,000 views, which is pretty good for any channel. If the people demand it, it shall be done. And it appears the people are demanding another dose of nostalgia. This is a look at the Western Digital Raptor, the world's first 10,000 RPM SATA hard drive. Piggybacking on what I talked about in my first Then and Now video, much of the hardware that is now considered classic popped up during a time when I really didn't have the funds to be able to afford any of it. When Western Digital introduced the Raptor in 2003 with an initial storage capacity of 37 gigabytes, people were in awe of its performance. They were also in awe of its price, which unfortunately I could not find any specific data on at the time of filming. It seems that any remaining archived reviews of the Raptor drives fail to mention price, at least for those initial release batches. Although I did find some data on the 150 gigabyte version released in 2006, which went for $350. We can reasonably infer that based on the price increase per gigabyte, that the original drive probably went for approximately the same amount of money. Although this is probably something that I should remember, being that I was in the industry at the time. The Raptor didn't look like a regular hard drive. It featured these really chunky and industrial fins around the exterior that aided in dissipating heat generated by the spinning platter. In fact, the look is so unusual that some of my younger friends who right now work for companies that make storage solutions didn't know what to think of it when I showed them a picture. One of them even said, that thing looks like a VHS tape. You know who you are. But looks aside, this thing could perform, at least relative to its competition at the time. The original Raptor could achieve burst read speeds of 122 megabytes per second, while other premium drives of the early and mid 2000s hovered around 90. To put two of these baddies in RAID 0 was to live the ultimate storage speed wet dream, but that was only an accessible configuration for those with the deepest pockets. Compare that to a modern premium spinning hard disk like Western Digital's black or blue drives, and those numbers start to look a little silly. But that's not what we're here today to do. So what I have on hand here is not the original Raptor. I just couldn't find one in decent enough condition for any reasonable price. This instead is the WD800 ADFS, an 80 gigabyte version released in 2006. This drive has some improvements over the original, including native support for SATA 3 gigabits per second, as opposed to needing a parallel to serial bridge like the original. Also, this drive has 16 megs of cache versus the original's eight, and it is considered to be a third generation device. Somehow though, I don't think it will really help in its fight against this drive, the Patriot Hellfire PCIe NVMe SSD, a drive with a greater concentration of acronyms, but far fewer moving parts. The Hellfire can achieve theoretical read speeds up to 3000 megabytes per second, or approximately 24 times the speed of the Raptor. It's also a fraction of the size and weight and has zero moving parts that can potentially fail and costs less than half as much. But such is the MO of this video series. Take an old part, compare it to a new part and see how far we've come. Let's attach both of these to our KB Lake test bench and run some benchmarks. Okay, so we have both the Raptor and the Patriot Hellfire hooked up to the test bench, which also is running the operating system off of a standard 2.5 inch SSD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate the SSD into our testing. We're going to first test the Raptor, then we're going to test the SSD, then we're going to test the Hellfire. And we're going to start off with Crystal Disk Mark. We're going to run our, our two tests, our Crystal Disk Mark and Addo Disk Benchmarks. These are pretty much the standard for disk benchmarking right now. Obviously there are many, many other tests, but these are the ones we're going to run and we'll start with Crystal Disk Mark. So, C is the SSD, 
D is the Patriot Hellfire, and E is the Raptor. So we're gonna run the Raptor first. I'm gonna run the sequential read and write. We'll get a result, and I'll move on to the next one. All right, so we're all done. 63 read, 80 write. So we're gonna move on up to the C drive, our SSD, and uh, run the same tests. All right, so we're all done. Uh, it's a little bit interesting that, of course, you know the numbers are gonna be higher, but the write speeds of the SSD are slower than the read speeds, whereas the inverse is true for the spinning disk. So let's move up to the Hellfire and see what kind of crazy numbers we can get out of it. So this drive does not disappoint. And the numbers are actually higher than what I have gotten from previous tests of the Samsung 950 Pro NVMe SSD. Uh, granted, I have not yet tested the 960 Pro, but from my understanding, the Hellfire is one of the fastest uh, PCIe NVMe drives out there. And this test certainly shows that there's not even any room left for decimals. So this is pretty impressive. And I think we have, uh, we've determined this drive is, is faster than the Raptor. All right, that's science. Let's move over to Addo and see what kind of results we get from there. See if they uh, they mimic our uh, initial test results from uh, Crystal Disk. Fast much too early. Prepare to fast forward. Preparing to fast forward. Fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. <laughs> All right, Addo Benchmark is finally all done. Takes a little bit longer than Crystal Disk because it runs the, all these different tests with all different block sizes of data. So you basically have to look at everything and, and kind of average it out a little bit. But you could see that we had write speeds peaking at 90 and read speeds peaking at the mid to high 80s. But when you take everything and average it out, you could see as the blocks got bigger, the write speeds remained moderately high while the read speeds actually dipped down pretty significantly. So overall, I think we're, we're in the same boat as, uh, as before as with Crystal Disk with the result that it was giving us. Okay, so let's now move on to the SSD. No, 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 go past this, past this part. In fact, never play this again. SSD results are in, and once again, we see a fairly reasonable repeat of what the results we were getting with Crystal Disk. It's interesting to see though that with the block size variation, aside from the very small ones, we get much more consistency out of the SSD than we did out of the spinning disk. I mean, I guess that can be attributed to the fact that there's no moving parts. Nothing to speed up, or slow down, or anything like that. It just reads from flash. So let's take a look at the Hellfire and prepare to be blown away. All done, and we see some remarkable consistency from this drive uh, throughout the test. I mean, the read speeds and the write speeds, I don't know if there's really any variation between them. Any, no, no noticeable variation between them at all. Um, once we get up, once we get up past the midway point here, and the, compared to the speeds we were achieving here, which is almost 3,000 megabytes per second, the speeds at the smaller block sizes are so low that they don't even appear on the chart. But this drive is an absolute beast, and uh, yeah, it's a little faster than the Raptor, I think. Impressive numbers, certainly. Even today's standard hard drives would dominate the Raptor in standard speed tests. But for its time, it was the thing that everybody wanted, and the drive that PC Magazine always included in their dream builds. Maybe today the Hellfire or other NVMe SSDs power our most advanced systems, but it's doubtful they would exist without the baby steps of innovation that led to products like the Raptor. So what do you guys think? Do you have fond memories of the Raptor or any other older hardware? Anybody out there run two of these drives in a RAID array? Is anyone still using one? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this series for more trips down memory lane. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.